so in james chapter 5 verse 13 it says is any among you afflicted let him pray is any merry let him sing psalms is any afflicted among you let him pray let him pray so james understand the mystery behind the deliverance of the afflicted the mystery behind the deliverance of the afflicted and this mystery is the force of prayer this mystery is the force of prayer so as believers we can engage the force of prayer we can engage the force of prayer whenever we are afflicted and we will receive our deliverance in the realm of the spirit with a mega manifestation in this physical realm so we can only receive our deliverance whenever we are afflicted through the power of prayer is any among you afflicted let him pray so whenever you are afflicted you have to increase the tempo of your prayer you have to increase the frequency and the force of of your prayer in the realm of the spirit and you will receive your deliverance in the realm of the spirit You will receive your deliverance if you can engage the force of prayer. You will receive your deliverance if you can engage the force of prayer. The wind of affliction will just disappear. The wind of affliction will just disappear totally from your corridor. The wind will disappear totally from your ministry. You shall see the Pharaoh no more. Because there is something working for you in the realm of the spirit. This is the force of prayer. So in 2 King chapter 19, verse 16, and Ezekiah prayed and said, Lord, bow down their ear and ear. Open, Lord, thy eyes and see and hear the words of Shenesherib, which are sent him to reproach the living God. So he prayed and said, Lord, bow down thy ear and hear, bow down thy ear, open Lord thy eyes and see and hear the words of Shenesherib, which are sent him to reproach the living God. So you pray to God whenever you are afflicted. You pray to God and command different parts of God to respond to your affliction. You command different systems of God to respond to your affliction. And Ezekiah said, Lord, bow down thy ears and open thou thy eyes. So he commanded the different parts of God to respond to his affliction. He commanded different parts of God for, for his deliverance, to enforce his deliverance in the spirit realm. So you can command different parts of God in the realm of the spirit. You can command the ears of God in the realm of the spirit. You can command the eyes of God in the realm of the spirit. You can move the hands of God by engaging the force of prayer. So you command different parts of God for your deliverance whenever you are in trouble. Ezekiah engaged this mystery and it worked for him. 
So you can also engage this mystery and it will work for you. It will work for you. In the realm of the spirit, your deliverance will just come speedily. So in Nehemiah chapter 9 verse 32, it says, Now therefore, our God, the great, the mighty, and the terrible God, who keeps covenant and mercy, let not all the trouble seem little before thee, that has come upon us, on our kings, on our princes, on our priests and princes, and on our prophets, and on our fathers, on our people, since the time of the kings of Assyria unto this day. This is a prayer for deliverance. This is a prayer of deliverance from the force of affliction, from the spirit of affliction. So you remind God his covenant and his mercy. The great, mighty, and terrible God who keeps covenant and mercy. You remind God of his covenant and his mercy. You engage the attributes of God in your prayer. You engage the attribute of God to enforce your deliverance in the realm of the spirit. All the attributes of God are different dimensions of God in the realm of the spirit. And as you remind God of his attributes in the realm of the spirit, you can easily enforce your deliverance in this physical realm. You remind God of how great he is. You remind God of how mighty he is. You remind God of how terrible he is. You remind God of his covenant with the church. And you will receive your deliverance. These are keys in the realm of the spirit. These are vital keys in the realm of the spirit. Nehemiah, engage this mystery. And it work for him. So if the prophet of old can engage these mysteries and it works for them, so you can also do the same. In this current dispensation, we are in the season of the later rain and the later rain is greater than the former rain. The later rain is greater than the former rain. So the power that is at work now is greater than the power in the old dispensation. We are carrying a greater mandate. And we are carrying a greater dominion mandate. In this current dispensation. So this dispensation is the dispensation of power and authority. So you have your deliverance. You have your deliverance already. Enforce your deliverance. Enforce your deliverance. And it will come to reality. So in Psalm 9 verse 13, it says, Have mercy upon me, O Lord. Consider my trouble, which I suffer of them that hate me. Thou that lifted me up from the gates of death. Thou that liftest me up from the gates of death. You can also engage the power of this psalm in your prayer. You can engage the power of this psalm in your prayer. For God is merciful. He will deliver you. He is merciful. He will deliver you from trouble. The psalmist said, Thou that liftest me up from the gates of death. So you remind God of what he has done in the past. He has delivered us from the gates of death. 2,000 years ago. 2,000 years ago. By the resurrection and the ascension of Christ Jesus. We are delivered totally from the gate of death 
So the gate of death and hell shall not prevail against the keys that are present in the kingdom. We have the victory in the time of trouble. We have the victory in the time of trouble. So in Lamentation, chapter 5, verse 1, it says, Remember, O Lord, what is come upon us, consider and behold our reproach. Consider and behold our reproach. Remember, O Lord, so you remember God. Remember, O Lord, what is come upon us. You call God to remember you in the time of trouble. You call God to remember you in the time of trouble and you will be delivered. In verse 2, it says, Our inheritance is turned to stranger. Our houses to aliens. We are orphans and fatherless. Our mothers are widows. We have drunk in our water for money. Our wood is sold unto us. You see the affliction of the afflicted. And he cried, Remember, O Lord, what is come upon us. So you declare in the realm of the Spirit, so that God can hear you. You declare in the realm of the Spirit, so that God can hear your cry. In the realm of the Spirit, you call God. And you mention your afflictions in your prayers. You mention your afflictions in your prayers. You list your afflictions as you raise the altar of prayers to God. You list your afflictions. All your afflictions as you raise the altar of prayers to God. So God is ready to deliver you. He's ready to consume you up with his presence. He's ready to release his presence upon you. He is ready to overshadow you with his awesome presence. So in Psalm 10 verse 1, it says, Why standest thou afar off, O Lord? Why addest thou thyself in times of trouble? Why addest thou thyself in times of trouble? So the psalmist cried out. He cried out for the presence of God and for the support of God. The presence of God is the support of God. The presence of God in your life is the power of God that can guarantee his deliverance. This is the power of God that can enforce your deliverance in the realm of the spirit. So you must pray for the presence of God. You must pray for the presence of God. So in Psalm 102 verse 2, he said, Hide not thy face from me in the day when I am in trouble. Incline thy ear unto me in the day when I call. Answer me speedily. In the day when I call. Answer me speedily. So you call for the support of God. You call for the support of God and the presence of God in your life. And Moses prayed to God. He prayed for the presence of God. If your presence will not follow me, I will not go. If your presence will not follow me, I will not go. So there is something beyond physical manifestation. This is the presence of God. There is something beyond signs in this earthly realm. Beyond signs in this earthly realm. You can see signs of God. But can you see the presence of God? 
can you carry the presence of God? What matters most in the realm of the spirit is the presence of God. If you have this presence, you have your deliverance. You have your deliverance. That is why David cried in Psalm 51 verse 11. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. So the Holy Spirit is the presence of God. The Holy Spirit is the presence of God. This is the power of God. That is why Jesus said unto his disciples that we pray to the Father. And I will send unto you another comforter. He will send unto you another comforter. Another comforter that will be with you forever. This comforter is the carrier of the presence of God. He is the carrier of the presence of God. And Apostle Paul said in Romans chapter 1 verse 4, And declare to be the Son of God with power, according to the spirit of holiness, by the resurrection from the dead. Declare to be the Son of God with power. So Jesus was declared to be the Son of God with power. With power. This power is the spirit of holiness. The Holy Spirit. According to the Holy Spirit. By the resurrection from the dead. So the Holy Spirit is the power of God. The Holy Spirit is the power of God. This power of God is the presence of God. So you must covet the presence of God. You must earnestly covet the presence of God. You covet the presence of God because this is the seal upon the church. The Holy Spirit, the seal upon the church. So you are carrying a seal in the realm of the Spirit. In the realm of the Spirit, in Romans chapter 8, verse 9, it says, But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. The Spirit of Christ in you is the presence of God in you. The Spirit of Christ in you is the presence of God in you. This is the Comforter and the Comforter will comfort you. In the time of trouble, the Comforter will comfort you. Yes, Lord. The Comforter will comfort you in the time of trouble. This is why Jesus called the Holy Spirit another comforter. Another comforter. He will comfort you in the time of affliction. So you must pray for the divine comfort of God. You pray for the divine comfort of God. You pray to put the Spirit of God to work. You pray to put the Spirit of God to work. So you put the Holy Spirit to work by engaging the force of prayer in the realm of the Spirit. So in Psalm 4, verse 6, it says, There be many that say, Who will show us any good? Lord, lift thou up the light of thy countenance. Lift thou up the light of thy countenance. The light of his countenance is the light of the Holy Spirit. Christ is the life, and the life is the light of men. So there is a life that can produce light. And there is a spirit carrying this life in the realm of the spirit. There is a spirit carrying this life in the unseen world. This spirit is the Holy Spirit. So you can only receive the light of God's countenance through the life of the Holy Spirit. This is your divine comfort. 
This is your divine comfort. So in Psalm 119 verse 76, it says, Let I pray thee, thy merciful kindness be for my comfort. Thy merciful kindness be for my comfort. According to thy word unto thy servant, let thy merciful kindness comfort me be to my comfort so his merciful kindness can comfort you you pray for the divine comfort of god whenever you are in trouble you pray for the divine comfort of god whenever you are in trouble and you will receive your deliverance so in psalm 39 verse 12 to 13 it says hear my prayer o lord and give ear unto my cry hold not thy peace at my tears for i am a stranger with thee and a sojourner as all my fathers were O oh, spare me that i may recover strength before i go hence and be no more spare me that i may recover strength spare me that i may recover strength so you pray for your deliverance you pray for your deliverance from trouble from affliction you pray for that deliverance and the deliverance will come the deliverance will come the deliverance will come you will definitely receive that deliverance you will receive it if you can pray for it you will receive it if you can pray for it you will receive it yes lord in psalm 25 verse 17 it says the troubles of my heart are enlarged oh bring down me out of my distresses bring down me out of my distresses the psalmist prayed for deliverance bring down me out of my troubles out of my affliction redeem israel oh god out of all his troubles redeem Israel out of all his troubles so there is someone that can redeem you out of your trouble and this is the almighty God the almighty God can redeem you out of all your troubles so in verse 10 of Psalm 39 it says remove thy stroke away from me I am consumed by the blow of thy hand I am consumed by the conflict of thy hand. Remove thy stroke away from me. Deliver me. Deliver me. So it is only God that can deliver you. So you pray for deliverance. And you pray for the deliverance of the church. You pray for the peace of the church. You pray for the peace of your fellow believers in the realm of the spirit. That is why Prophet Jeremiah said in Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 14, Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved. For thou art my praise. For thou art my praise. Heal me from affliction, and I shall be healed from affliction save me and i shall be saved from, from affliction so there is someone that can heal and save you he will heal you and he will save you they are different to be healed is different from being saved so he will deliver you from the casualty of the affliction and it will save you totally from another affliction so that you will not experience affliction again it will heal your wounds you are carrying wounds as a result of afflictions many people are carrying wounds both visible and invisible wounds as a result of their past afflictions so god can heal you from the wounds he can heal all the wounds that you are carrying 
spiritual wounds, mental wounds, psychological wounds, emotional wounds, and physical wounds. It can heal you from political wounds. So many people are carrying wounds in this earthly realm, and God can heal those wounds. and save you from another affliction so that you will not ex experience affliction again it will heal you that is the miracle of god and it will save you that is the blessing of god there is a difference between miracle and blessing there is a difference between miracle and blessing miracle will deliver you from the past affliction blessing will guide you so that you will not experience affliction again the blessing of the Lord will guide you so that you will not experience affliction again so in Isaiah chapter 64 Isaiah chapter 64 from verse 9 to 12 it says be thou wrought very sore O Lord Neither remember iniquity forever. Behold, see, we beseech thee. We are all thy people. The, thy holy cities are a wilderness. Zion is a wilderness. Jerusalem is a desolation. Zion is a wilderness. Zion is the church of God. And Jerusalem is a desolation. In verse 11, our holy and our beautiful house where our fathers praised thee are burnt up with fire and all our pleasant things are laid waste will thou refrain thyself for these things O lord will thou hold thy peace and afflict us very sore will thou hold thy peace so you charge god in the realm of the spirit you activate the power of god in the realm of the spirit activate the power of god in the realm of the spirit if you cannot activate the power of god god will just be looking at you you have to activate the power of god in the realm of the spirit before god can respond to your call you activate the power of God in the realm of the spirit and God will respond to your call. So in Psalm 39 verse 8, it says, Deliver me from all my transgressions. Make me not the reproach of the foolish. Make me not the reproach of the foolish. Deliver me totally from all my transgressions, from all my sin. Pardon me and deliver me from all my sin. So there is someone that can pardon you from your sin because sin can cause affliction. Your sin can be the genesis of your affliction. So you pray for deliverance from sin. You pray for deliverance from sin. So in Psalm 51, verse 1, this is a psalm of David. When Nathan the prophet came unto him after he had gone into Bathsheba, it says that David said, Have mercy upon me, O God, for I have done this evil before thy, thy sight. According to thy loving kindness, have mercy upon me. According unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. This is a prayer for sanctification. You must pray for sanctification so that you can live a life of holiness and righteousness. Sanctification can guide you in the realm of the spirit. Sanctification can protect you from affliction. Living a life of practical righteousness and holiness can guide you from affliction in the realm of the spirit. So if you can live a life of holiness and righteousness, you will be delivered totally from affliction. Affliction will disappear. 
because the wind of affliction cannot behold a lifestyle of righteousness and holiness. The wind of affliction cannot behold the holiness and the righteousness of God. So in Psalm 79, verse 8, it says, Oh, remember not against us former iniquities. Let thy tender mercies speedily prevent us, for we are brought very low. For we are brought very low. Remember not against us former iniquities. Erase our former iniquities. So you pray and put the blood of Jesus to work. You put the blood of Jesus to work. And you will be delivered from your former iniquities. You will be delivered from your former iniquities. If you can put the blood of Jesus to work, you activate the power of this blood. Because the blood of Jesus cleanses all sin. There is one blood that can cleanse your sin. There is one blood that can erase your sin. It's the blood can remove your stain. The physical blood of animals can cause stain. But there is a blood that cannot cause stain. This blood can remove your stain. All other blood will stain you. But there is a blood that can remove that stain. There is a blood in the realm of the spirit that can remove your stain. This is a mystery. A blood removing stain. And you will be whiter than snow. You will be whiter than snow. So you must engage the power of this blood. That is why Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father in the heavenlies that you will be delivered from affliction. The most difficult ministry of Jesus is the intercessory ministry of Jesus. Can you please write this point? The most difficult ministry of Jesus is the intercessory ministry of Jesus. The earthly ministry of Jesus is difficult but not the most difficult. The incarnation of Jesus is difficult, but not the most difficult. The suffering of Jesus and the crucifixion of Jesus on the cross is difficult, but not the most difficult. The ministry of Jesus in the realm of the dead is difficult, but not the most difficult. The resurrection and the ascension of Jesus is very difficult, but not the most difficult. But the intercessory ministry of Jesus right now at the right hand of the Father is difficult and the most difficult. To pray is very difficult. How can one person be seated at the right hand of the Father in the heavenlies? Pray for the whole world. One person, a single person, be seated at the right hand of the Father. If you want to know how difficult the intercessory ministry of Jesus is, go and sit down in your room and pray for 72 hours. Just pray for 72 hours and you will know how difficult the intercessory ministry of Jesus is. So his ministry is difficult. We have an advocate at the right hand of the Father. That is why John the Beloved said in 1 John chapter 2, verse 1, Little children, I write this unto you that you sin not. But if any man sin, we have an advocate, advocate with the Father, an advocate, an intercessor, and a mediator at the right hand of the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the propitiation for our sin. Not for our sins only, but also for the sin of the whole world. He is the propitiation for our sin. So there is a blood working for us in the realm of the spirit. This is the blood of Jesus. And the blood of Jesus cleanses all sin. The blood of Jesus cleanses all sin. You can engage this blood and you will be free. You engage this blood in the realm of the spirit and you will be free. In Psalm 80 verse 7, it says, Turn us again, O God of hosts, 
and cause thy face to shine and we shall be saved cause thy face to shine and we shall be saved turn us again O God of hosts and cause thy face to shine turn us again you cannot turn to God unless God turn you to him you cannot turn to God unless God turns you to him so God must turn you to him before you can turn to God God must draw you in the realm of the spirit before you can move close to God so you pray that God turn you to him you pray for the turning of God you pray for the call of God you pray for the calling of God you pray for that calling you pray for the divine call as you turn to God you will be delivered from affliction because the wind of affliction and the storm of affliction cannot blow in the arena of the saints the wind of affliction cannot blow in the jurisdiction of God so the moment you enter the realm of divine presence you will be delivered from affliction the wind of affliction will just disappear that wind will just disappear that is why Jeremiah said in Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 18 I have surely heard Ephraim bemoaning himself does. Thus chastised me, and I was chastised. As a bullock, unaccustomed to the yoke, that, that turn thou me, and I shall be torn. For thou art the Lord my God. For thou art the Lord my God. Turn down me and I shall be torn. Turn down me and I shall be torn. So you pray for divine turning. You pray for supernatural turn around. You pray for supernatural turn around. You pray for supernatural turn around. And you will be torn. You pray for it and you will receive it. You pray for it and you will receive it. So you can only receive it in the realm of prayer. You receive it in the realm of prayer. Climb the mountain of prayer and begin to pray. Climb the mountain of prayer and begin to pray. Begin to pray. This is what you must do. Whenever you are afflicted, this is what you must do. Whenever you are afflicted, you have to pray. Is there anyone afflicted? Let him pray. Let him pray. Is there anyone merry? Let him praise God. Let him sing psalms. Let him sing praises to God. So you pray and you sing praises to God. You pray to be delivered. And you sing praises to God in order to maintain your deliverance. So you can only maintain your deliverance by engaging the power of praise and worship. You maintain and sustain your deliverance by engaging the power of praise and worship. So in Psalm 85, verse 4 to 6, it says, Turn us, O God, of our salvation, and cause thy anger towards us to cease. Will thou be angry with us forever? Will thou draw out thy anger to all generations? Will thou not revive us again? that thy people may rejoice in thee that thy people may rejoice in thee so begin to rejoice in the lord pray for divine tony and you will receive it pray for divine tony pray for it and you will receive it you shall receive it in this earthly realm so in Job chapter 34 verse 32 
prophet Job saw this mystery and he said, That which I see, not teach thou me. That which I see not, teach thou me. If I have done iniquity, I will do no more. I will do no more. If I have done iniquity, I will do no more. That which I see not, teach thou me. There is something that you cannot see in the realm of the spirit. That is the revelation knowledge of God. It is only God that can teach you the revelation knowledge that will guarantee deliverance. There are revelation knowledge in the realm of the spirit that can enforce deliverance. The moment you apply this revelation knowledge, your deliverance will just come speedily. Your deliverance will just come speedily if you can engage this revelation knowledge. In the realm of the spirit, your deliverance will just come speedily. You will receive your deliverance without stress. You need the revelation knowledge. Jesus received the anointing without measure because he preached and teach the word of God. Because he preached and teach the word of God, Jesus was able to teach the word that he knows. He taught the word that he knew in his earthly ministry. You can only teach what you know. If you don't know it, you cannot teach it. And it is only God that can give you that revelation knowledge. That which I see not, teach thou me. There are some things that you cannot see with your physical eyes. But God can open your spiritual eyes and you begin to see them in the realm of the spirit. And the moment you apply these kingdom principles, it will work for you. You just apply them and it will work for you. And there are revelation knowledge that are specific. There are revelation knowledge that are specific. God will give you specific revelation knowledge that will solve your specific problem. God will give you a specific revelation knowledge that will solve a particular problem in your life. The revelation knowledge that will solve the problem of cancer is different from the revelation knowledge that will solve the problem of depression. There are different revelation knowledge in the realm of the spirit. If you need a job, there is a revelation knowledge that can create a job for you in this earthly realm. And you become a pioneer of a company. You become a pioneer of an organization that will feed nations through the revelation knowledge of God. So it is only God that can give you this divine revelation knowledge. This divine knowledge and direction into the realm of knowledge. Direction into the realm of knowledge. That which I see not. Teach thou me. This must be your prayers from today. This must be your prayer as from today. You pray to God that that which you see not, that the Lord should teach you, that, that the Lord should show you in the realm of the spirit. The moment you see it and you apply it, you will be free. You will be free. You will be free. You've been freed 2,000 years ago. You were freed from the power of death and air and affliction 2,000 years ago. But you are in bondage because your spiritual eyes are not open to see your freedom in the realm of the spirit. So for you to establish your freedom, there are revelation knowledge that you must apply. There are revelation knowledge that you must apply. There are revelation knowledge that you must apply. So your freedom will only respond to revelation knowledge. Your deliverance will only respond to revelation knowledge. So in Psalm 27 verse 11, the psalmist said, Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of my enemies. 
teach me thy way and lead me in the way of plainness in the way of plainness so if you can pass through that plain path you will be free if you can pass through that plain path you will be free and you be a leader in your world you will be free and you will be a leader in your world because you are walking through the plain path only leaders can pass through the plain path in this kingdom only leaders can pass through the plain path so if you want to become a leader you have to pass through that path and the moment you pass through that path you will become a leader you will become a leader in your generation a leader that will bring transformation a leader that will bring transformation in your generation a leader that will bring reformation a leader that will bring revolution so your deliverance can also bring transformation to your world your deliverance can also bring transformation to your world it is not only that you will be delivered your deliverance is not only for your benefit your deliverance is for the benefit of generations is for the benefit of generations so through your deliverance many generations shall be delivered that is the benefit of your deliverance and that is why you must overcome the affliction you must be free from the power of affliction so the psalmist also said in Psalm 143 verse 10 teach me to do thy will for thou art my God thy spirit is good lead me into the land of uprightness thy spirit is good thy spirit is good lead me into the land of uprightness so the spirit can lead you into the land of uprightness there is a spirit that can do this for you this is the holy spirit the holy spirit can lead you into the right land of uprightness the spirit can lead you into the realm of uprightness in verse 11 it says quicken me O lord for thy name's sake for thy righteousness sake bring my soul out of trouble out of affliction in verse 12 and of thy mercy cut off my enemies and destroy all them that afflict my soul for i am thy servant i am thy steward i am thy steward i am thy steward so you pray for your deliverance you pray for your deliverance and you pray for revelation knowledge more revelation knowledge more revelation knowledge more revelation knowledge deep things of god the revelation knowledge will show you the deep things of god and as you as you receive the deep things of god you also receive the deep blessings of god you receive the deep reward of god the deep blessings of god shall be given unto you through your deep revelation knowledge you cannot grow beyond your revelation knowledge you cannot expand and advance beyond what you know you cannot expand and advance beyond the revelation knowledge of god you cannot expand and advance beyond the revelation knowledge that you carry so what you carry will carry you in this earthly realm what you carry is what will carry you so you have to carry something because what you carry is what will make you to fly in this earthly realm you have to be light for you to fly that is according to the law of nature but according to the law of the spirit you have to be loaded for you to fly if you are not loaded you cannot fly in the realm of the spirit if you are not loaded with the things of god you cannot fly in the realm of the spirit so you have to be loaded for you to take a flight 
The high flyers in this kingdom are the loaded people in this kingdom. They are loaded with the deep mysteries of the kingdom. So if you are not loaded with the deep mysteries of the kingdom, there is no how you can fly. There is no how you can fly in the spirit realm. There is no how you can fly in the spirit realm. This is against the law of nature. This is against the law of science. This is against the law of philosophies. This is against the law of human traditions. The principles of humanity says you must be light for you to fly. But the principle of the kingdom says you must be loaded with the things of God. You must be loaded to the point of regurgitating. You must be loaded up to the point of you regurgitating the deep things of God. You regurgitate the deep things of God. You reshoot the cord. Like a ruminant animal in the realm of the spirit. Ruminant animals are animals carrying for complex stomach in the realm of the spirit. So in the realm of the spirit, you must carry for complex stomach like ruminant animals. So in this earthly realm, ruminant animals chew the cord. So in the spirit realm, you must behave like ruminant animals. As you eat the vegetations of the kingdom, which are the revelation knowledge, you regurgitate the cord and you reshoot the cord. You reshoot the revelation knowledge of God. You vomit the revelation knowledge of God. So you have to be loaded for you to fly in the realm of the spirit. You must be loaded, be loaded, be loaded. As you are loaded, your regurgitation will save many from the affliction. The moment you regurgitate, the wind of affliction will disappear. The thunder of affliction will cease. The thunder of affliction will cease. Amen. Yes, Lord. So your revelation knowledge is your launching path into the realm of prayer. And prayer is your launching pad into the realm of praise. So without revelation knowledge, you cannot enter into the realm of prayer. And without prayer, you cannot enter into the realm of praise. So revelation knowledge is the foundation for all the manifestation in this kingdom. So you must build your faith in the time of affliction. You build your faith before the time of affliction and in the time of affliction, it takes faith to overcome the battles of life. It takes faith to overcome the battles of life. So you increase your faith by feeding more and more on the revelation knowledge of God. In the gospel of Mark chapter 9 verse 24, and straightway the father of the child cried out and said unto Jesus with tears in his eyes, I believe, Lord, help thou my own belief. I believe, help thou my own belief. So there is someone that can help your own belief. This is the revelation knowledge of God. That revelation knowledge of God is a person in the realm of the spirit. The word of God is a person in the realm of the spirit. That person is Christ. So looking unto, up unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. The author, the beginning and the end. The author and the finisher of our faith. He will author it and he will finish it. He will initiate it and he will finish it through the revelation knowledge that is in the kingdom. So you pray for faith, for increase of faith. You pray for faith and for increase of faith so that you can overcome. Faith is our power in this kingdom. And taking the shield of it, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. The shield of faith. It's one of our weapons of warfare in this kingdom. 
The shield of faith is our weapon of warfare. Taking the shield of it is a defensive weapon and is an offensive weapon. The shield of it is a defensive weapon and is an offensive weapon. So we can use it to quench the fiery darts of affliction in the day of affliction. So the psalmist said in Psalm 6, 6 verse 2, Psalm 6 verse 2, have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I am weak, O Lord. Heal me, for my bones are vexed. Heal me, for my bones are vexed. Have mercy. It is by the mercy of God that we are saved. It is by the mercy of God that we are saved. If not by his mercy, we would have been consumed by the wind of affliction. We would have been consumed by the fire of affliction. But by his mercy, we were saved. So the mercy of God is still in operation. We can activate that mercy. We pray for the mercy of God. We pray for the mercy of God. Many giants are falling. Many giants today are falling. But the mercy of God still sustains us. The mercy of God still sustains us. We have the mercy in this kingdom. That is why we must come to the throne of grace. That we may obtain mercy and grace to help the afflicted in the time of need. We obtain mercy and grace to help the afflicted in the time of need. We render help to the afflicted because we are carrying the mercy and the grace of God. Without the mercy of God, we cannot help the afflicted. Without the mercy of God, we cannot help the afflicted. The mercy of God is God not giving to you what you deserve. That is the mercy of God. The mercy of God is God not giving you the punishment that you deserve. The grace of God is God giving you the blessing that you do not deserve. So there is a blessing that you don't deserve in the realm of the spirit. spirit. There is a blessing that you don't deserve in the realm of the spirit. And God is giving you that blessing. That is the grace of God. So God not giving you the punishment that you deserve is the mercy of God. So we have the mercy and grace in operation. Activate those mercy and grace by the force of prayer. Activate those mercies and grace by the force of prayer. In Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 2. Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 2. He says, O Lord, I have heard thy speech and was afraid, O Lord. Revive thy work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make known. In wrath, remember mercy. In wrath, remember mercy. In wrath, remember mercy. In wrath, remember mercy. Preserve us alive. Preserve us, Lord. Revive us. And in wrath, remember your mercy. Remember mercy. Let your mercy speak. So that mercy is a spirit. A speaking spirit in the realm of the spirit. The mercy and the grace are speaking spirits in the realm of the spirit. The mercy is a spirit in this kingdom. A speaking spirit, not a dull spirit. Not a deaf spirit. Not a dumb spirit. This spirit is not dumb. This spirit is not dumb. This spirit is not deaf. The spirit is not dull. The spirit is not dumb. The spirit is not deaf. The spirit can hear and the spirit can speak out. So engage this spirit by the force of your prayer. Engage this spirit by the force of your prayer. 
the psalmist said in Psalm 51 verse 8, Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice, that the bone which thou hast broken may rejoice. The bone which God has broken may rejoice. So you pray for the restoration of joy. You pray for the restoration of joy. In verse 12 of that same Psalm 51, it says, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Uphold me with thy free spirit. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. The joy of thy salvation. So you pray for the restoration of the joy of salvation. Salvation is different from the joy of salvation. Many people receive salvation, but never receive the joy of salvation. You activate the joy of salvation by your prayer. The joy of salvation represents the benefit of redemption. The joy of salvation represents the benefit of redemption. So you receive the benefit of redemption by engaging the power of your prayer. You engage the power of your prayer to enforce the release of the benefits of redemption in the realm of the spirit. So in Psalm 69 verse 29, the psalmist said, But I am poor and sorrowful. Let thy salvation, O God, set me up on high. Let thy salvation set me up on high. That is the joy of salvation. The salvation must set you up on high. The salvation will reposition you in the realm of the spirit. That is the joy of salvation. The salvation must reposition you in the realm of the spirit. Because we are raised up together with him and made to sit together with him in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. So we are seated with Christ Jesus in the heavenlies. In the heavenlies. So you can engage the power of salvation through the force of prayer in the realm of the spirit to reposition yourself in this earthly realm so that you can manifest the joy of salvation. So that is why you have to work out the joy of salvation with fear and trembling. You work it out yourself. You work out your own joy of salvation. Not your salvation. Your own joy of salvation with fear and trembling. With great trembling and fear before the Lord. Not the fear of darkness, but the fear of the light. The godly fear. The godly fear with fear and trembling, with great humility, with godly humility, you work it out and you receive it. You work it out and you receive it. So in Psalm 19, verse 14, verse 14, say, Oh, satisfy us early with thy mercy, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad according to the days wherein thou hast afflicted us, and the years wherein we have seen evil. Make us to be glad. Make us to rejoice. Make us to rejoice. Make us to rejoice. So you pray for the restoration of joy in this earthly realm. The joy has been restored. On the day of the resurrection of Jesus, from the realm of the dead, oh, and by the mystery of ascension, we have the restoration of joy back to the earth. We have the restoration of joy back to the earth. So on the day of Pentecost, we received the restoration of joy. The church received the restoration of joy. So we are to manifest that joy. We pray for it. We pray to activate that restoration of joy. We pray to activate it. The power of joy. The joy of salvation. Specifically the joy of salvation. In this kingdom. In this kingdom. Yes, Lord. And Ezekiah prayed 
against Shenesarib, king of Assyria, in 2 Kings chapter 19, verse 19. 2 Kings chapter 19 verse 19. It says, Now therefore, O Lord our God, I beseech thee, save thou us out of his hand, the hand of Shenesherib, king of Assyria, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that thou art the Lord God, even thou only. Even thou only. So you also pray for the protection and preservation. You pray for the protection and the preservation of the church on earth. You pray for the preservation of the kingdom from the powers of the enemies. Pray for the preservation of the kingdom from the powers of the enemy. The power of the enemy shall not prevail over the church. It shall not prevail over the kingdom. So we must pray for the preservation and the protection of the kingdom. The preservation and the protection of the kingdom. So in Psalm 17 verse 8 to 9. Keep me as the apple of the eye. Hide me under the shadow of thy wings. Keep me as the apple of the eye. The psalmist said, keep me as the apple of the of the eye hide me under the shadow of thy eyes and of thy wings this is the powerful prayer of king david and this prayer is still vital and still valid today the validity and the vitality of that prayer is very strong in the realm of the spirit Keep me as the apple of the eye. Hide me under the shadow of thy wings. Under the shadow of thy wings. Under your canopy. Hide me under your umbrella. Under your eyes. Hide me under your mentorship. This prayer is still valid today. From the wicked that oppress me, from my deadly enemies, who can pass me about? Who can pass me about? So you pray for the protection and the preservation of the kingdom so that the storm of the enemies will not prevail over the kingdom. So you pray for preservation and you pray that the Lord should open your eyes to see the source of your problem. Yes, Lord. Help me, Holy Spirit, to reveal this mystery. Help me, Holy Spirit, to reveal and release this mystery. This mystery is so great. Help me, Lord. You pray that the Lord open your eyes to see the cause of your problem of the affliction in the world. You pray that the Lord open your eyes. If your eyes be open, can be open to see the problem will disappear. If your eyes can be open to see the problem, the problem will disappear. And Job said in Job chapter 6 verse 24, Teach me and I will hold my tongue. Cause me to understand wherein I have erred. Cause me to understand wherein I have fallen short of your glory. Help me to understand, Lord, wherein I have been afflicted. I want to know the cause of my affliction. So pray to God that the Lord open your eyes to see the cause of the affliction. And the moment you see the cause of the affliction, apply kingdom principles, apply kingdom principles, and the problem will disappear. So in that same Job chapter 10 verse 2, Job said, I will say unto God, do not condemn me. Show me wherefore thou contendest with me. Show me therefore... Show me, I want to see wherefore thou contendest with me. 
open my eyes to see open my eyes to see i want to see this mystery i want to see it open my eyes to see it if you can pray that the lord should open your eyes to see you will see if you can pray that the lord should open your ears to hear you will hear if you can pray that the lord should open your heart to receive the deep things you will receive them you will receive the secret of the kingdom and you will receive the secret of darkness as well for you must not be ignorant of their devices you must know the secret behind the power of darkness so that you can overcome the power of darkness you pray for this in the realm of the spirit so in job 13 chapter 13 verse 23 to 24 how many are my enemies and sins make me to know my transgression and my sin wherefore i des thou thy face and o des me for thy enemy o des me for thy enemy how many are my iniquities and sin make me to know my transgression make me to know them make me to know them i want to know them job said make me to know them so you must pray that the lord open your eyes and open your mind to know open your mind to know the day you discover your infirmities that is the day your infirmities will disappear the moment you discover and you know that you are sick that is the day your sickness will disappear the day a madman knows that he is mad that is the day the madness will just disappear so if you can know your infirmities if you can discover your infirmities your infirmities will just disappear your infirmities will disappear if you can know them your infirmities shall disappear they will just disappear supernaturally in a natural form supernaturally in a natural form hallelujah <laughs> And the psalmist said in Psalm 39 verse 4, Lord, make me to know my end and the measure of my days, what it is, that I may know how free I am. Make me to know my end. So you pray to God in the time of affliction. You pray to God in the time of affliction that you may know That you may know the things of the spirit, the deep things of the spirit, the uncertainty of life is a mystery in the realm of the spirit, which cannot be unveiled unto us unless we engage the mystery of prayer and revelation knowledge. The uncertainty of life is a great mystery. You pray that you may be taught the uncertainty of life. You pray for the revelation knowledge concerning the uncertainty of life. In the time of affliction, you need this mystery. Make me to know my end and the measure of my days make me to know my end and the measure of my days some people are unshakable by the afflictions around them nothing can move them neither can't them their lives unto death they don't mind because they know that they can never die they cannot die now they know the date of their death <laughs> so if you walk with god to a certain level you will know the date of your death you will know the exact day and the exact date of your death if you really walk with god in the realm of the spirit 
the Lord will show you deep mysteries about the uncertainty of life. So what is uncertain in this world will become certain to you. And Elijah walked with God. And he knew the time that the Almighty God would take him all night. Elijah knew the time of his ascension. He knew the time of his ascension. Christ knew the time of his death, his resurrection. And he knew the time of his ascension. So through your prayer, you can receive deep mysteries of the kingdom. You can receive hidden mysteries of the kingdom. Hidden mysteries of the kingdom. So in Psalm 143, verse 11, the psalmist said, Quicken me, O Lord, for thy name's sake, for thy righteousness' sake. Bring my soul out of trouble. Quicken me, quicken me, O Lord. So we must pray in the time of affliction that we may be quickened. That we may be quickened. You pray that we may be quickened, we may be revived. To be quickened means to carry the life of Christ. If the Spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his Spirit that dwelleth in you by his spirit that dwells in you so you put the power of this spirit to work through the force of prayer so that you will be quickened by the spirit of the lord you will be quickened by the spirit of the lord if the spirit that raised up jesus from the dead dwells in you he that raised up christ so there is a difference between jesus christ and christ jesus and you must engage this mystery in your prayer. Jesus was Jesus Christ in his earthly ministry and in the realm of the dead. But after his resurrection, he became Christ Jesus. So Jesus Christ is the earthly Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ, get what I'm saying please. Jesus Christ is the earthly Jesus. Listen to me, please. And Christ Jesus is the resurrected Jesus. So there is a difference between the earthly Jesus and the resurrected Jesus. The power of Jesus that was in operation in his earthly ministry is different from the power that is in operation in the church. He said, things that I have done, ye shall do. And greater things than this shall ye do, because I go to my Father. Greater things than this so there is a greater power that we do it the resurrection of jesus magnifies the power of jesus in the in the church the resurrection of christ magnify the power of christ in the kingdom so we are operating based on the magnified power of christ in this kingdom we are operating based on the magnified power of christ in this in this kingdom this power can quicken us in the place of prayer. This power can quicken us in the place of prayer. And the moment we are quickened, we will be delivered from our affliction. So begin to engage the force of prayer. Begin to engage the force of prayer. And you will deliver your word from the wind of affliction. You will deliver your word from the force of affliction. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah.